Now on a Spielberg's animated apology letter for Crystal Skull, The Adventures of Tintin. That's a valid explanation for this movie's existence. But in all fairness, it's not a bad time. It does feel more like a Peter Jackson movie, though. I mean, Peter Jackson did produce the film, so that checks out. Overall, I thought it was fun, but in no way an animated masterpiece. I'd put it closer to the bottom of B tier. In the words of Jeremy Johns, it's a good time, no alcohol required, but nothing much more. I agree, bottom B tier. My feelings about this movie can be summarized with two words. It exists. Okay, now onto a movie which is somehow worse than the original stage play, War Horse. Or, as I like to call it, Rainbow Dash and the Adventures in Foster Care. Man, the human characters really bogged down this movie. Every time someone new owns Joey, Spielberg spends too much time fleshing them out which is absolutely pointless because they either die or are never seen again. I would have preferred the story focused more on the bonding between Joey and the Black Stallion top foreign, but the way it is now, I feel the movie is bottom B tier or top of C tier. I feel you, Joe. Seeing World War I through the eyes of a horse would have been a very unique viewing experience. Yes, but sadly, one of the two big rules in Hollywood is to not work with animals, and it's for a good reason. They're a bitch to work with. Making a whole movie from Joey's perspective would have been far too challenging. As it stands, it was a good enough holiday movie for the family, but it's ultimately forgettable besides a few sequences. Yeah, I moved to put this into C tier. I second that motion. Now on to a much better movie, 2012's Lincoln. This is a great movie. It has one of Daniel Day-Lewis's best performances, and it did a great job showing the complexities and downright nasty nature of American politics. Man, they didn't even show the good shit. Back in those days, it wasn't unknown for fistfights to erupt during debates. Man, I wish that shit would still happen. They'd make for good compilation videos. Also, I gotta say it was fucking crazy to see how many bribes Lincoln had to make to get the 13th Amendment passed. Mr. Stovepipe made more deals than an Italian mobster. Yeah, it almost makes your collusion with Russia seem normal. As for the movie, I think it deserves an S tier. It's definitely top three when it comes to Spielberg biopics. I would have given it the same if it weren't for the ending. The movie made me imagine what a wrinkly old Tommy Lee Jones would look like if he had sex with a black woman. And I really didn't appreciate it. Yeah, and I bet he wore his wig while going to town on her. Jesus, why the fuck would you guys even think of that? And why the hell did you have to say it out loud? Fine. How about A tier? I'm fine with that. I have no issue with it. Now, I believe Bridge of Spies is next. Yep, Spielberg and H Dog at it again. It's not an inspired casting choice, but it was a safe one. The movie was pretty mid coming off of Lincoln, but it was a solid watch, and it gave a good representation of the Red Scare that was sweeping the nation at the time. I watched it recently, and I really liked it. The movie gave a good sense of the pressure that comes from fighting an unwinnable case, and it was also a good commentary on our justice system. Even if you're white, Sometimes you aren't innocent until proven guilty. That happens when you're a fucking insurrectionist, Donald. I prefer the term defender of democracy. Thank you very much. Don't try to save face, Trump. You defend democracy like Lizard defends a double quarter pounder with cheese. Sick burn Joe. Okay, you guys want to add this to the growing pile, which is B tier? Yep, while I find it more enjoyable than either Amistad or Munich, it's not as good of a courtroom drama or a political thriller, respectively. That's a fair analysis, Joe. I'll agree with B tier. Okay, now on to one of his weirder movies, The Big Fucking, I mean, The Big Friendly Giant. Can't lie, this movie did not impress me. It was fun, but like War Horse, it's incredibly forgettable. I like this movie a lot more than I thought I would. It's one of the better Roll Doll adaptations, and it really captured the bizarre logic and world building that are in the books. And as usual, Spielberg pulled a great performance out of his child actor. Which is incredibly impressive considering she's most likely acting against a tennis ball on a blue screen. I'm surprised she hasn't been in much after this. I seriously don't understand why Spielberg didn't just make this an animated movie. The CGI giants look goofy in comparison to the photographed characters, and call me old-fashioned, but mushroom cloud fart jokes just don't work well in live action. So are we thinking C-tier? I'd give it a B-tier, but I can understand a C-tier. Okay, now on to a seriously underappreciated gem in his filmography, The Post. Fuck this movie. The whole damn thing is thinly veiled propaganda made specifically to encourage liberal news stations to spread fake news about me. No, you fucking dumbass. It was saying that the news needs to expose corruption. And the fact it made you think about your own presidency is very telling. Go get a fucking brain freeze from your chocolate chip ice cream, Joe. This movie is ass, and that non-binary alien you appointed over nuclear energy was a bigger L than my entire presidency. Trump, shut the fuck up. Since your opinion is dumber than a gaze for Palestine March, you don't get a vote on this movie. Joe, I think the movie deserves a tier. It's very well paced for a biopic. The chemistry between Hanks and Streep is contagious. And the direction is top notch. Amen. I was stressed throughout the whole movie and I already knew the outcome. Also, this movie is even better if you watch all the President's Men right after. The two make a perfect double feature. Great advice. Into a tier it goes.
Now for a fun but ultimately disappointing movie, Ready Player One. Having Spielberg directing this movie must have seemed like a good idea at the time, but in the end it fell kind of flat. Yeah, having the man who made half of the references in this movie also directed feels masturbatory. The only thing going for this movie is fan service, and worst of all, it doesn't do the book justice. Hell, even if it did, the world they portray in the story is so unrealistic. Who the hell would put so much money into stuff that isn't real? Dude, how much money have you dropped on Fortnite skins? Touche. Fucking thought so. And get real Trump fan service or not, you were a Tracer main back in 2018. I know you love seeing her on the big screen. Damn, I almost forgot about that. Fuck, I miss old school Overwatch. And while I was upset that it wasn't as faithful to the book as I wanted in the end. Who cares? It was a fun time. Nothing great, but it was good enough for a $5 Tuesday. Since you liked it more than either of us, Joe, what would you rank it? I'd give it a low B tier. It was enjoyable, but nothing worth remembering. Sadly, Joe, I can't rate it that high. I'll acknowledge it had some fun moments, but overall, it's a C-tier member Barry Pie. I agree. Even with the Tracer cameo, this movie maxes out at a high C-tier for me. Top of C-tier it is then. Now for Spielberg's passion project and his only musical, West Side Story. This movie was a long time in the making. You could tell from 1941 and Temple of Doom that Spielberg was dying to do a musical, and boy, he set the bar real high for himself. Crazily enough, though, that crazy bastard reached it. The remake is almost on par in every aspect with the original, and in some ways improves upon it. For example, in the remake, the cinematography is a bit too flashy. It's not in any way, shape, or form bad, but it forgoes the head-to-toe wide shots of the original, which focused the audience on the choreography. It instead adds more exaggerated motion to the shots in order to make the dances feel more energetic. At the same time, however, the relationship between Tony and Maria is way more relatable in the remake, and more time is devoted to fleshing out the two gangs. Unlike in the original, where the two groups feel like they are fighting for no good established reason, in the remake, you totally understand why the two groups are fighting, and you can appreciate both of their flawed perspectives. I'm glad you brought that up, Barry. I was pleasantly surprised how they gave some humanity back to the Jets. In a world where everything is black and white, and where white people are always shown as unredeemable racists, it was nice that Spielberg showed how white people also get alienated by the system. I mean, we get it a little bit better because our skin color is better, but you're right, Trump, the struggle is real, and this movie is fantastic. Nigga, did you really just say our fucking skin color is better? Uh, no. Barack, I've seen your Ice Spice photo collection. I know you know light skins look better. As a man who is happily married to a dark-skinned ebony queen, I resent that, Don. My love for Ice Spice is purely for her lyrical genius. Bro, she unironically released a song that said, Think you the shit? You ain't even a fart. You can't fool us, Simpzilla. By the way, has Michelle woken up from her benzo nap yet? Fuck you racist peckerwood douchebags. My marriage is fine, and I love dark-skinned bitches. As I was saying before this stupid side tangent, this movie is great. It's not up there in S tier, but it's definitely a standout in Spielberg's work. I say it gets an A tier. Your love of Ice Spice is weird, but I agree. A tier. I agree with you on both accounts, Joe. A tier. Now on to his latest work and well-deserved autobiography, The Fablemans. I fucking love this movie. It's a great insight into Spielberg's life, and it explains why most of his movies have themes about family dysfunction. What were your thoughts on his overly emotional whore mother, Barack? Did she resonate with you on a personal level? No, it didn't trump, and she wasn't a highly emotional whore. She was an extroverted, imaginative, and passionately gifted woman who had a two-inch dick human calculator for a husband. Hey, there's no need to bring size into this. Oh, my bad, Joe. I forgot about your accident. Oh, yeah. Isn't your surgery this week? It's all good, Obama. And yes, Trump, the surgery is on Wednesday. I'll make sure to pray for you, fam. Same. I'll light a candle for you. Thanks, fellas. Back to the movie, I really loved it as well. Like the both of you, I am a sucker for any movie about filmmaking, but this was elevated to another level. It reminded me of when I tried to make movies as a kid, and it really brought me back to a simpler time when filmmaking was still mysterious and magical. I, too, am a simp for movies about movies, and I must say the ending shot of this film is possibly the best meta joke I've ever seen outside of a Deadpool movie. God, that was so good. I literally busted out laughing in the theater when that happened. And honestly, if Spielberg never directed another movie after this, I'd be fine with it. It's a great high note to go out on. I agree, but even if he doesn't, I wouldn't mind. Doing this list has made me really appreciate how good of a director Spielberg is. The guy averages six to seven movies a decade, and even the crappier ones are still well made, or at least enjoyable to watch. Yeah, he is a reliable source for good content, which can't be said for other big Hollywood names. Speaking of big Hollywood names, I think I know who we should do next. Our favorite grandpa filmmaker, George Miller.
I wouldn't mind doing that, but first we must watch Godzilla minus one. Preferably the black and white version. I'm down. Michelle isn't awake yet, so I still have some time to kill. Bro, you really ought to check on her. She low-key might be dead. I don't think the worst things could happen. Anyways, I'll see you guys over at my place to watch Minus One. Oh, and make sure to bring your Dune popcorn buckets. I never go to a movie without it, Barack. I'll cancel my golf for the rest of the day. See you later, Joe. See you later, homies. Oh, and thank you all for watching this video. Eric, the guy who makes these videos, might be an inconsistent bitch when it comes to posting, but he really appreciates all the likes and comments you guys leave for him. It really makes his day knowing you like his videos and that you look forward to his latest content. He doesn't know when he will get to making the George Miller video, as he is pretty worn out from making this one, but rest assured, he will keep you posted. Until next time, you all be safe and have a great day.